every tuning video you see on the internet has you fighting for the idea that there's a right way to do things or a wrong way to do things. And we're here to put a stop to that once and for all. We're all currently living in a world where making media has basically been democratized. Anyone can start a YouTube channel, just like we did. Anyone can start a Facebook page, tell you information and have it seem like it's definitely true, just based on all the pageantry around it and the fact that they're on a screen talking to you. Where this starts to fall apart is that a person can have a tremendous amount of reach on the internet and not fully understand the responsibility that comes with a reach that size. What we're really talking about today is how to understand how to vet the information that we're hearing on the internet and seeing with our eyes on the internet to make sure that we're not taking in things that are leading us astray from what we're trying to learn, helping us improve and get where we're trying to go. Something that we've been seeing a lot recently is videos about tuning like a pro. This is just one example, but this is the one we're gonna use for today. If we say that someone is a great musician, a great drummer, that doesn't mean that they know how to tune their drums really well. It doesn't really mean anything other than that they are excellent at playing that instrument. To be honest, maybe they're not even excellent at it. To be a professional just means that they get paid to do it. If we then take this idea and extrapolate it to that they know everything there is to know about that instrument, we are really taking ourselves out of the lane where we're gonna make sure that we're getting good information. In some videos that we watched recently, there were demonstrable moments where a famous drummer said in the course of getting their sound that the technique they were employing, well, they don't really know what it does, but they saw somebody do it once. For us, that flies in the face of the idea that we want to know what we're doing and more importantly, why we're doing it. Because if we're doing things that we don't understand, there's no way we can trust the ultimate fallout of that information. This also goes for any methodology you've ever heard that right out of the gate says, do this one thing, that's all you need to do, you don't have to think about it anymore, don't overthink it, this is it, full stop. For the amount of times that we have had someone specifically comment that they use anybody's method for getting a sound out of a drum, but then they make adjustments afterward, that's a perfect example of saying that that initial thing wasn't complete and that they actually know more. The drummer in question who is leaving this comment, they know more about tuning than they're letting on, but at the same time, they wanna defend this prescription that is supposed to be the end all be all. This kind of thinking when we're talking about prescriptions leads people to ideas like five lug toms are difficult to tune, or there's something wrong with 14 inch floor toms because this prescription didn't get a good sound this one time, so now all bets are off. What we're really talking about is bigger than drums actually at this point. This is about understanding what it means to relinquish our critical thinking and allow information in without vetting it at all, deciding that that's true, and then not thinking about it anymore. This can go for tuning, it can go for playing, it can go for anything that you might learn about on the internet, bicycles, politics, everything in between. Something you'll see in our episodes with a high degree of consistency is that we are trying to give you information just on a platter and encourage you to take that into your practice, into your sound. Your mileage will definitely vary and learn just from this information. The information is innocent. You can do with it whatever you want. But the last thing we want is for you to see us do a thing, take that as pure dogma with no analysis, and run away with that and never question why we're doing what we're doing and why the results come out the way that they do. Information by itself is fine, but the only way it can become knowledge is through concerted practice. You have to take the time to understand the how, the why, all the possible results and all the possible variables that can show up in the course of assimilating that information so that you can use it quickly and ultimately get to a spot where 
you could probably tune a drum faster than somebody that's just pressing on the center and taking the wrinkles out. This leads us to something that basically drives us crazy in the world of drums, and it exists in every idiom and space in the world. And it is the idea of someone sitting in the position of an expert and displaying willful ignorance as if it's cool to not know. It's cool to not know what kind of strings are on your guitar, or it's cool to not know, you know, what brand of thing you're using, or cool to not know how it works. There's no reason to do that unless you're not interested. That's okay. If you're not interested in knowing those things, fine. It's going to limit you, but there's only more you can get out of the instrument the more that you learn about how it works and why the results are what they are when you change something. Now that we have this democratization of information, people with that mindset can, either on purpose or by accident, find themselves in positions of authority when it comes to education, and then disseminate the idea that it's cool to not know what's going on with the thing that you're doing. Someone out there can be watching this and think to themselves, oh, he's not a scientist. I'm not a scientist. That means that I don't need to know about these things because He's a professional and he doesn't know, so now I'm off the hook. This speaks directly to a viewer who perhaps is impatient or maybe even out of a sense of laziness would love to have the shortest distance to the task be done that could possibly be. If the person on screen is giving you absolutes and finite answers and saying, this is it, you don't need to go past this, there's nothing else to know, that's super duper comforting if you're curious and you wanna be feeling like you're doing the right thing. In the overwhelming and massive space that is the internet, putting people's fears at ease, making them comfortable, and telling them that they're okay is absolutely intoxicating. And it makes sense why those are the things that tend to show up at the top of searches when you go into any search engine or any piece of social media looking for information of any kind. Ultimately, what this boils down to is media literacy and taking responsibility for how you consume the information that you choose to consume. You can spend a lot of time and not end up learning anything, or you can spend a very narrow amount of time and get a tremendous amount of information that then can be turned into knowledge and help you grow as a musician and as a person in this wildly inundated world where it's hard to find answers to much of anything. What we're really asking you for here, just as a person in the world, no matter if you play drums every day or just once in a while, is to remember that it's up to each of us to make sure that what we're taking in is the best information and that we're putting that information to use and again, turning it into knowledge and not allowing ourselves to get mired in the idea that any one person has an answer. That includes us. We just want to give you information. Whatever you do with it is up to you. But... That means that you have a responsibility to take this innocent information and do something with it. So the next time that you see a video about tuning or drums or bicycles or politics or whatever it is, take a moment, back up, give yourself the opportunity to analyze the quality and the context of that information and also the person saying it to you and make sure that you are hearing what you think you're hearing so that you can put that into use. Rather than watching a quick clip on the internet and deciding that that's the truth and the whole truth, consider this. Take data. This could be something as simple as a lesson that was taught to you or a piece of information that you got on the internet. Next, we're gonna collate these things into information, which is the sum total of all of this data that we've gathered. Now we're gonna put it into use. We're gonna experiment, we're gonna try some things out, and we're gonna keep track of what happened. This turns it into knowledge. But there's a fourth step, and that is, doing this enough and analyzing it enough until it becomes wisdom. Once we're in the wisdom space, we can start to predict outcomes. We can start to feel like we understand what is happening without having to check every single variable anymore because we have enough knowledge and enough experience that essentially we can plan ahead and we don't have to worry about all this anymore.
This isn't a magical thing or any kind of pie in the sky idea. We do this naturally and unconsciously all the time in our lives, but doing it with intentionality is a choice that we have to make. And sometimes that's a little bit more uncomfortable and we don't necessarily trust that it's gonna work. Ultimately, what we want for all of you is to be able to take this and use it to close the gap between expectation and reality, quell fears, let go of shame, and make all of this easier.